Today I wanted to show you guys when you should also do content pruning. Um, now, obviously one thing that a lot of SEOs, they understand is topical authority. So writing um, as many different articles as, as it makes sense about a certain subject. So Google deems your website as an authoritative figure in the space, so it ranks it higher. Now, in some cases you can do basically topical dilution. And in that case, Google will essentially kind of misunderstand what your website's actually about and it, you will actually get penalized for it. So if you guys have potentially lost rankings, um, potentially after a core algorithm update or even after like the HCU and stuff, this is one thing that you might want to take into consideration when, um, when analyzing your website. Did you know that 81% of businesses are overspending when it comes to actually trying to rank their website organically in Google? That's why I've decided to create the Traffic Accelerator system. It will tell you exactly what your website is lacking. The Traffic Accelerator system will tell you exactly how many backlinks you need, what articles you're missing on your website, and also how to internally link those articles together to gain topical authority. Now, if you're struggling to rank on Google, click the link down below, get the Traffic Accelerator system for your website. It's only $195 and it will tell you exactly everything your website is lacking. So this diagram is part of my um, blog post that I'm actually going to be publishing later this week about website recovery. Um, if you guys haven't, head over to casualdash.com and, and sign up to the newsletter. As soon as this um, article does go live, um, it's pretty in-depth. Like I'm probably maybe halfway through it already. Um, it's already maybe like 1,600 or 2,000 words. Um, but back to the content pruning, right? So <clears throat> In a lot of cases, um, actually removing articles from your website can definitely help. So one thing that I would recommend for this is obviously if you guys do sign up to Screaming Frog um, or if, if you've got like a small enough website, you might not even need the premium version of Screaming Frog. But you can actually, um, if you go into configuration um, and or sorry is it configuration I think it is yeah configuration API access you can set, you can hook this up to um, Google Analytics or GA4 um, I know a lot of people they don't like using this um, but you can actually hook up to GA4 to look at individual page sessions um, you can also hook up to go to Google search console so you can look at clicks and impressions per page um, let, I'll show you guys what it looks like in here as well. Um, so you've got like the date range, so you can actually do like a date range of let's say um, 30 days, 7 days, 3 months, 6 months, 12 months. I like to look at things over a 12 month period because in some cases, like some of you guys might have like an e-commerce store. Um, and if I was to do like a 6 month period, um, the my Black Friday page for example might come up in, in, in um, in the actual audit to say like maybe we should prune that article but i know for a fact that every black friday november 30th or whatever it is black friday date that page might get let's say sixty thousand visits or six thousand visits per per um per black friday so in that case i wouldn't look to to actually remove that page but let's say for example if you had a blog article that hadn't had any clicks over a 12 month period um, and ga4 is not actually tracked it or even if you were to hook this up to let's say um Google Search Console, right? Because you can do the exact same thing um, in Google Search Console. So you can actually take a look at like a 30 day period, six month period, 12 month, and this will tell you individually per page how many clicks and how many impressions that page has had. So how much traffic and how much clicks that page has had from Google. Now, if I had a blog post that hadn't had any clicks or impressions, this is the diagram that I would be looking at, right? So once you obviously have got that list, the first step that you want to be making certain you do is obviously load up um, Google um, Search Console or GA4 in actual um, in Screen Frog, run your website and it will have individual columns. So it'll tell you like, okay, this page has had, let's say five clicks. This page has had 15 clicks. This page has had 500 clicks, right? But any pages that like you're uncertain of, th these are the questions that we want to be asking ourselves, right? So should you prune or optimize a page from your site? So obviously the first page would be evaluate the content. Is the content out of date and irrelevant? Can it be optimized um, to make it more relevant considering semantic SEO? Yes. 
Um, so if in that case you would want to optimize that content um, and make that article better, right? In that case, you wouldn't want to prune or delete that page. If the the answer to that is no, um, we, the next question would be, does it have any historical significance or valuable backlinks? So then the actual questions that we would be answering is, if it does, yes, okay, we want to 301 that page to another relevant article. Um, if it's not got any significant value of backlinks, um, it's not had any um, historical data, let's say, you then want to 410 that page. You've then got um, the next question or the next branch uh, would be, does this content receive no uh, traffic despite optimization? So let's say, for example, we've actually optimized this article. So we've went off to the sub branch, but we've then decided to optimize this article. Um, does the, does the content get no traffic? So then if the actual answer to that is yes, um, has all optimization opportunities been exhausted? So another good thing about Screaming Frog is it will tell you how many internal links that page has. So let's say for example, if a page has had, um, it has been optimized, it's been re-optimized, um, but it only has like, let's say one or two internal links, we would then want to potentially build more internal links or potentially we might want to decide to build, do some link building or potentially we might want to um, get some social traffic, like let's say do, doing some social shares and stuff like that, right? Um, if the um, answer to that is no, we would then want to further optimize that page, whether it's building more um, internal links, whether it's doing more tier, um, whether it's doing more um, link building, etc. Um, then the actual answer to that is should you prune? Um, if there's a, a sustainable redirect target, yes. It, like if say, for example, we decide, okay, this page, we're going to actually delete this page. We might then decide to find another relevant page in 301 that if there is just literally no value at all you want to do a 410 and basically if you guys don't know what a 410 is um i'll load up an example so what is a 410 um that's a type of gun um, in terms of seo of seo so 4, 404 versus 410 so you don't want the page to just 404 because every because google will still crawl that url a 410 basically tells um a browser or a, a crawler should i say that that page no longer exists that url isn't um a thing anymore so stop coming back to this so it's also helping your crawl budget as well when you do a 410 um, but this is like the 410 and um, what one thing I will do um, in this actual blog article once it goes live I'll, I'll actually link to like um, where you can read a little bit more about 410s and 404s and 301s and stuff like that basically a 301 redirects um, so if that page did have any historical data we want a 301 that to another relevant page a 410 basically tells Google to stop coming back to this actual URL um, then <clears throat> we've got, does the, the content negatively impact your site's overall SEO? So for example, um, does the page have any um, issues? Has it got any broken images, um, any broken links, etc.? cetera? Um, if the answer to that is yes, can we obviously um, improve that? So um, if say, for example, it's got a video and that video is, t it's, slowing down the page can we potentially remove that video could that then um improve our rankings if that can obviously improve our rankings we would then want to try to essentially exhaust all of the optimization methods um, if the answer to that is no we then obviously want to ask ourselves um have we got another page that's fairly relevant um that we can do a free one to and then um I'll, I'll go to the bigger version of the image um so, do, 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 do. so then we've got 301 um, of redirect to the authoritative page, 410 if the harmful uh, and other offers no redirect opportunities. So if we don't have a page that we can obviously um, 301 that page to, we would obviously 410. We also have got some um, main questions we probably want to um, ask ourselves. So like evaluate the content and obviously update um using historical and performance semantic SEO. Check um, if the 
webs or check if the page at a page level that's super important if there's any historical um, or significant information so it has the page got links pointing through to it if it does we want a 301 we don't want a 410 or just leave to 404 um, at any point we never want a 404 any of these pages we want to make certain that we're doing something with that page whether it's a 410 or a 301 or potentially even a 302 um, but in, in this case a lot of a lot of 410 or 301 or 301 uh, we then want to have does it support user experience or is it part of a content cluster um, that's another big thing then we've got a consideration so does it drive traffic from non SEO sources like social media or email like for example some pages on your website especially if you're quite a big brand it might not get any SEO traffic but it might get like you might have like let's say a email list with 5000 people on that email list and that specific page although it might not get any search um search traffic it might get a lot of email traffic or it might get a lot of facebook ads traffic in that case we don't want to remove that uh, that page off of our website um, then the final question that you want to be asking yourself is is the content still relevant but needs a strategic update so in in certain cases um laws change like let's say for example if you're a law firm and um, you might have a certain article talking about a certain divorce law and um, that might have changed recently in in the state of let's say california um, in that case you might have dropped some positions for that specific page in that case you don't want to um, delete that page you don't want to 410 it you don't want to 301 it you actually just want to update the content um, and that will obviously try and jump you back into position but um, that's been the actual video today for content pruning um, this is kind of like in collaboration with um, with James um like we, we've done a lot of um content pruning um over the years and this is the a very similar strategy that we both use um in terms of should this article um be removed off the page so yeah like what i mentioned at the start not every single page on your website should actually um or not every single page on your website can have a positive impact it can also have a negative impact so Go through this worksheet um, or go through this workflow. Ask yourself these questions um, at a page by page level. Obviously, if you haven't already, use Screaming Frog because that will indicate to you which pages are um, dragging your website down. And obviously, then you've got this hit list of things that you can obviously further optimize that page for. But that's been the video on actual content pruning. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. And as always, if you guys do want a growth strategy call, make certain to check out Cash or Dash. Um, we do obviously have a brand new website. Um, but head over to the contact page, fill in the contact form, and I will be in touch. Thanks.